surprised the snake has not detected me, being that I'm only about <laughs> five inches away from it. It's actually a heck of a lot colder than I had anticipated out here. Uh, we're already uh, moving into May and it's it's in the very low 70s already. So check out my real high tech uh, setup. Oh yeah, one magnetic light. I don't use all the crazy light bars and everything else to look for pythons because well, generally it's not needed. But we've got a beautiful sunset going on out here and uh, i'm in the section of road that i'm going to be utilizing tonight to try to find these banded waters um even though it's pretty cold out usually your your nerodia will move right right at dark pretty strongly even in chilly conditions so i'm gonna give it a shot i'm solo i'm not gonna be out here long i'm gonna try to just nab these snakes and then uh move on from there awesome
All right, so here's our target species. This is the Florida banded water snake, Nerodia fasciata pictiventris. And the reason they call it pictiventris, if you look at the ventral scales, they have a beautiful pattern on them like they've been painted. So hence the name pictiventris. But this is the species I'm looking for. I'm actually very surprised I've been out for quite a while. And this is the first one I've seen. Usually these things are a dime a dozen. You also notice they're mean little suckers. They'll bite a lot, but you see how it's flattening out that head? A lot of people mistake these for cotton mouths, but they're just harmless little water snakes. And uh, well, we're gonna go ahead and bag this snake because we need to move quickly. We're gonna try to nab a couple of these, six of them for the state, and we're gonna go as fast as we can because they usually move right now at dark. So oh, I'm gonna bag the snake up real quick. And normally I wouldn't bother with collecting any, any snakes, but this is for a scientific project. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bag up some of these. All right, here comes number two, smaller snake, but beautiful little animal. I'm gonna go ahead and bag it up. Well, in the process of, look at this, this is a three-striped mud turtle crossing the road. We're gonna go ahead and get it off the road so no one else runs it over today. All right there, buddy. You go ahead and have yourself a good evening. <laughs> All right, here comes number three for the bandits. All right, well, it's a little bit better looking one. Pretty. All right. It's not a banded, but it's a beautiful little corn snake. So look at this gorgeous little thing. This is a little yearling. So this, this snake hatched out last year, probably sometime in the late summer, August or September. But it's a gorgeous little corn snake. We're gonna go ahead and send it on its way, the direction it was going, and keep looking for some banded waters. Come on, buddy, get out there. Okay. I think I got enough warning lights on those dash, check engine light, maintenance required light, flat tire light. I got all kinds of lights. Looks like a Christmas tree. Anyway, it's been kind of slow. So far we got those three bandits and uh, saw that three striped mud turtle and the corn snake. But uh, there's some nights when literally in just a few miles, you can see three dozen banded water snakes moving around here. It often coincides with uh, water levels and there's migrations that occur in the Everglades uh, that I mean, back in the old days, meaning I think the last big migration I saw was 1994. But back in the late 80s, there was times when I counted over 1,000 snakes crossing the roads in a night, mainly water snakes, all in relation to the uh, the water uh, water level migrations, which generally occur in March and April. But uh, well, there's just not that many snakes left anymore. So, you know, there's a multitude of factors for that, uh, environmental factors. Uh, Manipulation of water levels, herbicides, all these things have really, really taken their toll on the uh, the native snakes down here in South Florida. Uh, it certainly isn't collectors. There's not people out collecting water snakes uh, in any kind of numbers. Um, they have pretty much no value. Uh, like I said, tonight is strictly the scientific mission for me, getting these snakes for uh, the state to do some research on parasites. And hopefully we can fill the order. It's look, not looking like we're going to be able to. I thought we would have probably seen at least a dozen by now. We've only seen those three. But we'll keep at it for a little while. And then, uh, well, maybe we'll switch the pythons or maybe we'll call it a night. We'll see how it goes. Let's see what we got here in the road. It's tiny. Well, this is a Florida brown snake right here. It actually has a meal in it, so... It's a Florida brown snake. They used to call these decay snakes, Steroria decayi, but uh, little tiny snakes. This is, you know, they get a little bit bigger than this, but not much. This is an adult, but it's either gravid. No, actually, it's a male, so it's not gravid. It might have a meal in it. We're going to go ahead and take it over here and send it on its way. The direction it was heading. All right, there, buddy. Nope. <laughs> other way. Uh, look it down there. Go the other way before you get run over. All right, cool. Banded water snake number four. Very slow night tonight. 
we should be catching these things like crazy but we're not so here's another one though so that's a plus okay all right little banded water snake that's number five this is a highly variable species some of them are beautiful other ones like this eh, not so much all right our bag is filling up which is good wait i see another one coming onto the road from here i think is that another banded water snake look at this i got, got one putting one in the bag and i got another adult one coming onto the road right here look at that so that's cool put one in the bag this one's a really dark one ugly ugly as can be but it's not his fault sorry you're not a pretty one sweetheart <laughs> but you're gonna help out science so all right oh well how about this there's another one right in front of me now they're moving Woohoo! okay okay that's what we needed needed to get a couple of adults that's three in the headlights at one time that's how it's supposed to be i was getting worried usually some nights out here in literally in a couple miles i can see 30 of these things and well tonight's not that night but at least at least we got a few what i'll probably do now is release some of these smaller ones and just keep the adults but uh we'll see how it goes with like 20 bandits instead of trying to do 10 garters uh, you know what yeah that'd I, be awesome that was the reason i called i didn't want to bother you yeah. but I, I started thinking no, no, it's it never bothered me. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's actually a good idea i thought of that so yeah, yeah because i was be. i was thinking that you know there you're not going to get 10 guards i'll meet you somewhere that's okay. convenient yep I'll, I'll give you a call in just a little bit cool, cool. all right, all right. You. you got it no problem all right bye-bye bye. 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 all right so we've been finding banded water snakes so here's this is a Florida green water snake. This is Nerodia floridana. And they generally have a nasty disposition, but if you're gentle with them and just kind of let them flow through your hands like this, they're just like any other nature scene, you know, like a garter snake or anything. They, they calm down really nice and they're actually beautiful. These used to get really big ones in Florida. I used to see giant ones of these in the five foot range, but you don't anymore. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and send this snake on its way. It's not our target species. Go ahead, buddy. Get going. All right. Cool. Here I have banded water snakes. Three of them. I'm gonna grab them as quick as I can. One. Two. Three. So <laughs> the state decided to bump up the number of snakes from 10 to 20. So I'm going to try to fill that order tonight. I think right now we're at 13. Look how pretty that one is. So talking about the variability and the coloration of these, look at how gorgeous the pattern is on this banded water snake. Gorgeous animal. It's a really pretty, pretty banded water snake. And this one's very light in coloration. Almost looks like a cotton mouth from a distance. All right there, buddy. Look at that, how light that snake is. So I think that's 15, so five more to go and the state will be happy, but that's a beautiful snake right there. Okay. And of course, before all you haters start talking about collecting snakes, this is for the greater good. There's parasites that are uh, found in these snakes in South Florida and we're trying to figure out the source of it so they're going to do a study on these particular snakes because well banded water snakes are plentiful and they seem to also have quite a bit of this parasite in them so that's the reason we're picking this particular species and that's the reason I'm collecting them otherwise I would not be bothering these native animals I'd be letting them do their thing but if this can uh, you know if scientists can identify the uh, parasite and the source this could be for the greater good um if you look at some of my past videos you will see where i post videos of extremely emaciated snakes in fact if i do make a video out of this video i'll post some of those 
those uh, videos of the, you know the king snakes and the yellow rat snakes and everything else that's just highly parasitized here in South Florida, and uh, it's pretty shocking to just watch the amount of snakes that are vanishing. But uh, anyway, we've got just a few more to go. Hopefully, we can fill that order. I'm sure we can. Uh, the rate things are going, we should be able to nab uh, four or five more of these bandits. But anyways, well, stay tuned. We'll see what happens. You never know. We might get a python crossing the road too. guy foraging right here right on the side of the road like nothing's going on see him flicking that tongue taste in the air not a concern in the world that I'm here just tongue flicking like crazy trying to figure out what the heck is going on here The snake has not detected me, being that I'm only about <laughs> five inches away from it. Beautiful snake. It's going to move now, because I'm going to grab it by the tail. I hear you. Alright, let's clip this back onto my chest. Yeah, yeah. Pin you down real quick. Gent gentle little pin to the head. Alright. Okay, well, one is better than none. So I'm going to go ahead and enter some data on this snake it in and uh, well look at it knotting up on me right there that's always funny when they do that go ahead and bag and tag and we're gonna go ahead and move on well that was a pretty fun night to get out there and do something other than just look for pythons though it's always nice to find a python well cool little update the state actually did the study with these snakes and they were looking for a type of parasite called a pentastome which is it's a type of long worm that occurs in these uh, animals they were in particular looking for one called Rylatiella orientalis, which is found in Burmese pythons, and we believe it's been transferred over to our native snakes. Well, it turns out that 70% of these banded water snakes ended up actually having the parasite in them, so we garnered some pretty good information. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy this educational little video, and as I always say, I hope to see you all out there in the Everglades. Take care and stay safe.